Today I'm going to show you what layer masks are inside of Photoshop, how to use them, why I use them all the time, and why you should too. So if you're ready to learn some cool Photoshop tricks, then grab your snacks, get comfortable, and let's get cracking. What's up everyone, my name is Francois. Thanks so much for joining me on this beautiful day. So today I want to introduce you to the concept of layer masks, show you how to use them to your advantage, and if you follow this tutorial until the end, you'll become an absolute master at them. So the way I usually explain how layer masks work, and the way that my students seem to understand it the best, is by translating Photoshop's language into real world with real life elements. You'll see what I mean. Imagine that your layer, not the mask yet, is a drawing on a piece of paper. It can have colors, images, whatever you want. Well, adding a layer mask to it is like adding a window on top of it and looking at your drawing through the glass of that window. Now, that window may not always be clean, right? Sometimes it may have dirt on it, which means that if, let's say, there's a stain here on that part of that window, then you won't be able to see through it anymore and you won't be able to see the parts of your drawing that are directly behind that stain. Pretty obvious, right? Well, that's with real life elements in the real world. But how does that translate into Photoshop, which is its own world in itself? Well, Photoshop translates the cleanliness of that window into black and white values. To put it simply, layer masks don't understand colors, only black, white, and all the shades of grays in between. So when your window is squeaky clean and you can see through it perfectly, in Photoshop language, that means that the layer mask is entirely white. And the opposite is true. If your window is entirely dirty and you cannot see through it even one bit, then in Photoshop's language, it means that the layer mask is fully black. Now, what if that window is dirty, but you can still see through it a little? Well, now Photoshop will translate that into a shade of grey. But how bright does that grey have to be? Well, that depends on how dirty the window is. If your window is only a little bit dirty and you can see most of your drawing through it, then the layer mask will only be a light grey, a brighter shade of grey. Something like this, for example. And if the window is very dirty and you can only see through it a tiny bit, then your layer mask will have to be a dark shade of grey. Something like this, for example. So the dirtier the window is, the lesser you can see your image or your drawing, and the darker the layer mask becomes. Now, the beauty of using layer masks, or these so-called glass windows, is that a dirty window can be cleaned, and equally, a clean window can be made dirty. So the reason why I use layer masks instead of the eraser tool, for example, is that once you erase parts of your image, it's gone. Yes, you can use Ctrl or Command Z to undo the past few actions, but if you save that project, close it and reopen it later, you won't be able to Ctrl Z it anymore. Let's put this into action, just so you can see what it looks like. Let's say I've got this picture and that, for the sake of this tutorial, I want to start making some of the background transparent. I could use the eraser tool by pressing E on my keyboard, and I could simply paint over here to remove that part. The problem is, if I save and close this project, and I come back to it tomorrow and realize that actually I don't want to remove the background, but I want to remove the person from the picture, well, there is now no way for me to bring back the parts I've erased without re-importing the picture and starting from scratch. It's okay in a scenario like this when I haven't done a lot of work, but let's say I'm working on a more complex composite like this one, then it becomes impossible to use. Uh, so what should I do then? Well, to use the terms I've used so far, instead of directly erasing pixels from the picture, what we're going to do is put a glass window in front of it, and we'll make it dirty in places of the picture that we want to get rid of. Let me show you how to do that. First of all, in order to put a window on top of a layer, you have to click this icon at the bottom of the layer panel. You can now see this white rectangle just appeared. That means that you're now looking at this image through a clean window. And this is the clean window we're about to make dirty. In order to make it dirty and opaque, I'm going to select the layer mask and take a black brush to paint over the parts of the picture that I want to remove. So imagine the glass window is on top of the image. Just paint over it like so. Now imagine that I go over the wrong parts and I save the documents and close it. Am I in trouble? Well, let's see. If I reopen the documents, you can see that this poor girl's head is still missing. That's because, again, remember, we're looking at it through a window that is partially dirty. But remember, a clean window can be made dirty, we've just done that, and a dirty window can be cleaned. And to clean a dirty part of a window, all I have to do is take a white brush, make sure the layer mask is selected, not the layer itself, and just go back over the missing parts. Just like this. Now, let's say that I change my mind one more time and that I do want to remove that poor girl's head again. Well, no problem, Jeff. Just take a black brush again and paint over the head. Oh, was that Jeff? You actually do want the head back? That's okay, let's just take a white brush again and paint over it. Et voila. Now you get the idea, you can do this back and forth indefinitely. And that's why using masks is so important to me. So, so, so important. 
It gives you the right to change your mind. It gives you the right to mess up. It gives you the flexibility to do whatever you want, which you simply don't get when you use what we call destructive tools like the eraser tool. Now, you're not just limited to using a brush on a layer mask. In fact, other than adding colors to them, you can pretty much do whatever you want to it, which you can do to a normal layer. You can apply a gradient to it, you can use the burn and dodge tool, you can select and move it, and so on and so forth. Also, by default, your window will follow every transformation you apply to the image. This means that if you decide to change the scale and position of your picture, then the window will always hide or reveal the same parts of your image. Now, let's say that you don't want that. I've got a very rough cutout of a person doing some kind of yoga on top of a basic gradient here. I know it looks terrible, but it's only to show you how this works. Now, let's say I want to move the layer mask or the window to show the other person who we can't see just yet. While there is this chain link between the layer and its layer mask, you can toggle it on and on just by clicking it. When it's on, it means that the transformation you do will apply to both your image and its mask. With the layer mask selected, I'm now able to bring up the transformation tool, as I normally would, by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Again, I've toggled the chain link off. Okay, now I want to flip it horizontally by disabling the proportions here and entering minus 100 in the width instead of 100. Okay, now I'm literally moving and editing the mask independently from the image. So now you imagine that instead of moving your drawing and a glass window together, you're moving them independently. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I like teaching these techniques by showing you how to create some cool designs in the process. It's just more fun like this, just like it's more fun to learn how to play the guitar by learning how to play your favorite songs. I know that today's tutorial was a bit more focused on the technical aspects, but I hope that my analogy with the windows and my ways of teaching made it clear and easy to understand. I've planned more tutorials like this in the future, covering a bit more of the nitty gritty of Photoshop, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, and other softwares too. So I hope you like these types of videos, I really enjoy making them and seeing what you guys make from my tutorials. So there you have it guys, this is everything you need to know about layer masks in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If you did and you did my accent, make sure you like this video as it really helps with the algorithm. Also feel free to get subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. Finally, if you're wondering what to watch next, I recommend you to watch this video right here. Thanks again for watching, my name is Francois, see you in the next video.